Well, I'm going to model for you three of the main related rates problems. It's really implicit differentiation. The first type is the Pythagorean theorem. Then we're going to review our geometry skills, woohoo, and do some volume and area. And last of all, we've got a revisit trig, folks. So when we're doing implicit differentiation application problems, these will be the three main types. So let's look at our first one. Our first one here is going to be Pythagorean theorem. And we've got Tweety Bird. I know you probably never watched this on, as a cartoon, but I did. So most of these problems, you are going to have to draw a diagram, and it will help you understand better. Now remember, we want to take note of what rates do we know and what rates do we want. And then from that, we'll write an equation relating the two. So we've got Tweety is resting in a birdhouse 24 feet off the ground. Okay, yeah. so we got the birdhouse. 24 feet off the ground. Using a 26 foot ladder, so here's my 26 foot ladder, which he leaned against the pole holding the birdhouse. Sylvester tries to steal the small yellow bird. Tweety's bodyguard, bodyguard, Hector the dog, starts pulling the base. Okay, well, here's my dog. I'm not very good at drawing. He starts pulling the base of the ladder away from the pole. So he's pulling the ladder away at a rate of two feet per second. Okay, folks, there's my first given rate. So if I label this triangle, let's say I label the base X and the height Y. So we are given, we know dx dt is equal to two feet per second. How fast is the ladder falling? Okay, that's what we want to find out. So that will be dy dt when, okay, this is something new to us. This is a condition. So we want to find the rate at that moment. So how we notate that is next to our rate dy dt, we put a vertical line there. So we want to find the rate of change of y when it is 10 feet off the ground. So in other words, when the height, oh, since I labeled the height y, I'll say y, d, when the y is equal to 10. So I want to find dy dt when y equals 10. Okay, so now that I know the rate that I've been given and I know what I want, let's write an equation. We've got a right triangle going on here. So this is going to be our Pythagorean theorem example. So we have x squared plus y squared. Now since the latter is a constant height, that will be 26 squared. And so now I'm going to differentiate in respect to time. So this is implicit differentiation, which is actually just chain rule. So I take the derivative of x squared in respect to x first, which is 2x, but then I take the derivative of x in respect to time because the independent variable is time. Now the derivative of y squared first in respect to y is 2y, and then I take the derivative of y in respect to time. And of course, the derivative of a constant is zero. Now let's substitute everything that we've been given. So we have 2. We don't know the x, but maybe we'll figure that out. And the dx dt is 2 plus 2. And then the y is 10 because it's at that moment. And we want to solve for dy dt. So we have one too many variables here. We want to solve for dy dt, but we still have an x. So what can we do to find that unknown? Well, we have a Pythagorean theorem triangle here, right? And so the hypotenuse is 26, the height is 10. Can't we find x? Of course we can. If we go x squared plus 10 squared is equal to 26 squared, well, I've kind of already done the math. x squared is actually equal to 26 squared minus 100, so that's 576. So actually, x is equal to 14. No, I was wrong. X is equal to 24. I've kind of run out of room here. Oh, there we go. X is equal to 24. So now I substitute 24 for X. And now I can isolate dy dt and find how quickly this ladder is falling. So 2 times 20 is 48. Then I get 96 plus 20 dy dt and I end up with dy dt is equal 
to negative 96 over 20, which is negative 4.8 feet per second. So the ladder is falling at 4.8 feet per second when it is 10 feet off the ground. Fantastic. So there's our first typical example, the Pythagorean theorem. Now let's do a second one. And our second one is usually either volume or surface area or area. And so now we've got a water tank that has a shape of an inverted circular cone. Oh yeah, we do. Okay. So here's my inverted circular cone. Nice. With a base radius of two. Okay. So we have a radius of two meters and a height of four meters, a height of four meters. Okay, if water is being pumped into the tank at a rate of two meters cubed, and it's supposed to be per minute, ooh, that's a rate, isn't it? So what rate do we know? Well, the units will help you out a lot. It's meters cubed per minute. Well, we know meters cubed is volume. So we are given the rate of change of the volume is two, and then meters cubed per minute. Find the rate at which the water level is rising. So that's what we want. So rising, we'll have that be the height. So we want to find the dH dt. But when? When the water is three meters deep. So that will be our height when the height is three meters. Okay, folks. So now we have to figure out now how to apply these rates. And I did give you the equation for volume of a cone. I know, probably didn't remember that. So the volume of the circular cone is given here. Well, we need to take the derivative in respect to time. I have an issue though. Do you notice when you look at this function, you've got two unknowns. We have an R and an H. So if we take the derivative of that, that's going to require a product rule. And then we're going to have a dr dt. Well, if you look here, there's nothing about a dr dt. So can we rewrite this equation before I take the derivative in respect to just one variable? Well, look back here at my diagram. There's a fact we have not used. We have not used this ratio of 2 to 4. So we know that this cone has a ratio where the radius is 2 and the height is 4. And we're filling up the cone, right? And we don't know the radius or the height because that's what's changing. So in problems like this, many times we're going to have to use our geometry skills. And you see I'm creating similar triangles here. So no matter how deep the cone is, the ratio of rate to height has to be a 2 to 4 ratio. Now, I could solve for one, isolate one of the variables, and then replace that in the original equation. Now, I'm going to want to solve for r. And the reason why is that because you know I want dh dt. So that means I want to leave, whoops, I'm sorry, 2h. I want to leave h in the function. So r will be h over 2. So I'm going to erase, not erase, replace in the original equation, wherever I have a radius, with h over 2. So I have 1 third pi h over 2 squared times h. Now before I take the derivative, of course I want to simplify this function. So I have 1 third pi, and then this is h squared over 4 times h. So let's combine all of our monomials here. So we have 1 over 12 pi h to the third. Now that's a much easier equation to take the derivative of here. So let's take the derivative in respect to time. Keep trying to move my screen up. This is the first time, by the way, I've used my Microsoft Pro to make a video and I'm struggling a little. So bring the three in the front. So I get three twelfths, which is one fourth pi. And then it's brought the three in the front. So it's h squared and then it's dh dt. Uh oh, I just got a warning saying that I've about reached my limit on the free recording time. So I might have to stop it here and continue on with this in my next recording. Oh, that's what happens when you have free apps. Okay, come back soon.